<laughs> Hello and welcome to your later than usual, the Scarf Bagara War podcast on this Wednesday evening with me, Russ Johnson, and I'm joined by Waggy as always. You all right, Waggy? Yeah, not too bad. We might as well do it at nine o'clock because this week's just been screwed up at all. Totally, hasn't it? Playing Thursday night, playing Monday night. You know, Jordi Atta did his away day show at quarter past five on Monday Monday evening. Yeah. It's just it's just all over the shop. So we, we can't have just five, done it at eight o'clock. <laughs> yeah, five fifteen, five fifteen kickoff on a Saturday as well. It's like that time before between Christmas and New Year. I know you just know what time it is. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's doing my head in as well. Good evening to everybody that's watching and listening. Uh, Phil Lloyd, Ian Dowd, and Nick Ten. I'm sure the others will, the other regulars will uh, will pop online if they're not in bed already. So yeah, apologies for the nine o'clock start. We've got the usual pack show though for you tonight. We're going to talk about the Salford draw, the Crawley draw. We've got an MK Don's opposition preview. We're going to talk about the running. We've got some stats for you that we've nicked off other people, including Waggy. Waggy's been at, Waggy's been at a spreadsheet. Uh, we've got getting reses and we've got our fan guests to bring out. They uh, will bring out very shortly. Before I do any of that, I've got to announce that Jim Gannon event for the co-op is still in the planning. So please keep an eye out for that. And the co-op are still looking for volunteers for a couple of uh, a couple of appointments that I can't remember the name of. I'll mention it next week. But they do need those volunteers so if you if you fancy getting involved in the co-op and doing something good for stockport county fans then do let them know and they are available on their website which can be searched through google how about that then so let's let's get our guest out okay so our guest um i've got his details this time actually uh, where is it should, should it, right our guest his first game so this gives you a good idea of how old people are. That's what I. That's what I find. Anyway, I'm just a nosy <laughs> bastard. <laughs> or how old we feel. Or how old we feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, first county game was Carlisle away in March 1996. Ooh, first game say, away game. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. I wonder. We'll have to. We'll have to look that up and and the scores and stuff. Unless unless this 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 you know this fan guest remembers. Favourite county goal. So he split this into two spells, and he'll, he'll explain why later. But his first spell, favourite goal, John Hardiker, second against Man City, which, incidentally, <clears throat> Tuesday was how many years? Well, uh, 21. What? 21. 2002, wasn't it? So that's 22 years then. 22. So, yeah, it's 2024, not 2023, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> second spell. Ash Palmer equaliser against Bolton. So I know which transition to use. There you go. That makes it easy for me when you, when I bring him out. Favourite player, first spell, Tony Dinning. Oh, yeah. Strong Good choice. Show. Yeah, strong choice. Yeah. Uh, and second spell, <clears throat> Ben Inchliffe. Yeah. Still, still there. Still yeah. playing. I know. Yeah, we'll ask him. We'll ask this fan guest if he's ever met his hero, Ben Hinchliffe, and what did he think of him? So... Without further ado, let's bring out our fan guest, which is Tom Fletcher. Evening, gents. How are you doing? Evening, right. you okay? That 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 transition audio is of Palmer scoring against Bolton. You can hear the thud off his head. You, you can hear the thud, yeah. yeah. You can of the, of the net. Um, many people wouldn't believe us, but it definitely is. I've got it on good authority that it's definitely, it definitely is. <laughs> okay, and see, normally at this point we bring out the opposition guests, but what I'm going to do is going to leave that till later, and we'll, we'll actually go in chronological order. I think tonight, which is a, which is probably a first for us since forever. So yeah, uh, let's I'm not used to this. That's like organisation. I know it's weird, isn't it? It's weird. <laughs> you know what it is? It's because I don't like to get them on and have them waiting, or don't like to say, "Oh, come on at quarter two, because we might be in the flow of some some other conversation. So I just try to get them on, get them off, then we get can carry on talking. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. Um, so Tom, um, let, let's just have a bit of a chat around your uh, your choices first. I think just to get you get get to know you a bit better. So first game, Carlisle away, right? I've not looked it up. Didn't Paul Ware score an absolute peach at Carlisle away? Uh, well, I was five, so I'm, I'm, oh right, um, <laughs> I was um, I'm struggling, I'm struggling a bit to recall the detail, but apparently County won one nil. Um, it's it's he, he's not said this, my old man, but it stinks of my old man saying to me, mum, oh, because um, you know, a weekend away in the Lake District when County playing Carlisle away, and he sneaks off and, and takes me, which uh, 
I very much think probably happened. Good. Good lad. <laughs> no, well, um, there is nothing wrong with that. I've took my family for a weekend away to Cleethorpes and County have been playing Grimsby away. So, look, you know, I'm, I'm with your old man there. And Southend. We've been to Southend away. <laughs> So, so yeah, we can get Blackpool, can't we? Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, let's carry on. Uh, I don't know. I might, might look, I'm going to look that game up as we uh, as, as as we continue. Favorite county goal first spell, John Hardiker. I mean, yeah, bloody hell. Yeah. yeah. It was. It was just a good. It was a great game, wasn't it? And just everything about that goal was was perfect. You were obviously bombing forward and. Then Palmer got the uh, Palmer came in with a tackle and give it to Andy Welsh, I think, wasn't it, on the left hand side? And um, even just the finish obviously carries his run on straight into the cheat line. It's perfect, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, around that time, I think it was about 11 or 12. So obviously at high school and a lot of city fans at, at school and stuff. So it was absolutely spot on, obviously, going back into going back into school after that, even though we'd been relegated. So yeah. Um, it sort of made, made that sort of not really matter that much at that point yeah it was good i, I enjoyed it I... quite a while haven't we at that point as well so yeah i'd um i'd got a couple of lads that i worked with it was it was city fans tickets in the cheeland um and i just said to them i just said just just be quiet when you score just be quiet because it was like you're gonna beat us like you know you was thinking it was gonna be like three four five nil didn't we because they were 10 was it 10 points clear or was it a bit they were they were basically champions elect weren't they and we'd just been relegated yeah. at, um the weekend before is it at wimbledon i think it was we got relegated the weekend before i know we got relegated at wimbledon because cooper played for him at the time didn't he did he All right. Right. yeah because didn't he go so, to wimbledon yeah. from us i can't, I can't remember but oh, yeah, I do remember good. going into the going into the day after because I think it was actually like um, upper tier three that had gotten tickets because they were the only ones available. And I went, that's where all the all the singing and everything goes on. So just just be careful. <laughs> taking <laughs> taking town traitors into into the into the home end. What, what Charging double. Like? Charging double. <laughs> <laughs> fun, uh, fun fact about John Hardiker because he's from Preston. I used to live in Preston. Uh, I was called Preston Hatter on the old yellow board. That was my first handle. Um, I only lived there four years while I, while I was working. And his his parents live around the corner from me because they saw me car with the Stockport County thing in the back, and they offered right. me they offered me um, like, do you want to go to away matches? It would come with us to away matches, and I I didn't take them up on the offer in the end. I should have done really, shouldn't I? Because I wasn't going to every away match at the time. I was working. And things, um, and then I actually saw John Hardiker on a night out, and spent, and then spent the night out with him. <laughs> Went to a club. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird, man. Him and his brother. His brother's an Everton fan. That's all I remember from that night. It's very, very blurry. <laughs> but yeah, John Hardiker, strong choice, mate. Strong choice. Um, yeah. And then you got Ash Palmer. With, with, I mean, we've covered that. I mean, it, it speaks for itself, doesn't it? That one. It was just it was like the redemption on it from the own goal as well, and yeah, it was, it yeah. was just everything about it was at the cheer end, and um, just, even just looking at that footage back now, it's like you sort of relive it again, don't you? Yeah, and just like transported back there, which I suppose the beauty of goals like that. Yeah. Oh yeah, that'll live. That'll live long in the memory. That one, won't it? I think we we it was just proper limbs in the in the in, all over really, but especially in the cheer yeah. Even in the main stand, there was uh, there was limbs. Yeah. Oh, was Some it? Prospect. Prospect. I was going to say. <laughs> Brilliant. That's the, that's the name of the podcast, Prosthetic Limbs. <laughs> uh, and then favourite player, Tony Dinning. I mean, yeah. Is that, is that for, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm not even going to say is that for the City goal. It's just because it's Tony Dinning, isn't it? Yeah, he was, was just class, wasn't he? And around that time when I, when I first started going as well, and um, it was just a, a real class act, wasn't he? And obviously took penalties as well. Which when you're when you're a kid, it's that's probably one of the most exciting moments in a game when you're you know a really young kid. And you know, I think he scored most. You know, I don't think he, he he very rarely missed, didn't he? So yeah. uh, and, he, and he scored a, um, and the celebration against Weaver uh, at Main Road was, was quality, wasn't it? So yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And then Ben Inchliffe. Have you met have you met Ben Inchliffe? 
No, um, I've got a bit of a Hinchliff story because um, my old man had a bit of an accident and, and broke his ribs. And uh, I know Steve Bellis a bit, and, and I mentioned it to to Steve that this had happened. And then um, probably about an hour later, I got a, a voice, um, sorry, a, a video from Ben Hinchliff saying, based, you know, to um, to my dad just saying get well soon and um, and all that. And I sent it to my dad, and he was still in hospital at the time in in like uh, intensive care, and it really perked him up. And I thought. You know, it's great. It says a lot about him, I'm sure, as as a person. He comes across as a as a top bloke and it says a lot about him and a lot about the club as well that you know, Steve didn't have to do that. Um, you know, and he really went above and beyond and I think that's that's the difference, isn't it, between supporting you know, county and supporting someone else, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, there's um, so many stories like that, isn't there? Around the club and stuff for, over the years and things like that as well. So yeah, they, they, we do really well in that respect, don't we? And we know, then we need to, you know, when when these when these people at the club have moved on for whatever reason, we we need other people to come along and and be that, you know, be that community spirited, don't we? And and take that on. So it'd be interesting um, to see who who does that. Just looking at some of the comments coming in, all the usual people have now joined us. Cheers for that. We've got um, a Forest fan. Don't know why Ranga of the Forest. Yeah, cheers, mate. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, cheers. Uh, cheers for that. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the football for ourselves then. Uh, two two away at Salford. Two. Well, I tell you what, is it? I don't know. Should we do it in chronological order? Two two away at Salford, then move on to Crawley, or are this is the is the synergies with both games? Poor first half. Decent. Well, half. yeah, pretty much the same. For, for, apart from Crawley, we weren't two 0 down at half time. <laughs> True. There's, there's so many cliches about the Salford game in there. You know, Jack and I game or two half that you could. You know, you could just spend ten minutes churning out, and it's, yeah. it was like that, wasn't it? And I think that that for the first, the first goal was obviously a, a great strike in it, but nine times out of ten that ends up in crumbs, all right? And it's yeah, but it's um sort of a bit unfortunate. But if you give someone that much space, you know, um, twenty five yards out, it's uh, you're asking for it a bit, aren't you? Yeah, as you say, he'd probably never score a game a goal like that again in his career, will he? It was just an absolute sensational strike. So, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, Salford first half, we just we tried to play like Salford, and we just got battered. We just got Salford. Yeah, we got Salford. <laughs> we, we don't do very well against these teams that go long, a physical play for the throw. Yeah, you know, Matt Smith, as you say, it, I think you, you said it on the on the club call, and I think pretty much everybody said it for the second goal. It's not Matt Smith's going to win the header. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter who you put up against him, he's going to win the header. So it's winning that second header, yeah. and that's just what we and what we didn't do. And why was why did we have Paddy marking at Til the other centre, yeah. the centre half? Yeah, that just seemed a bit of a mismatch as well. So yeah, we just got out sulfurded. <laughs> The warning signs were there pretty early on, weren't they? As well, like, yeah. I think I I walked in the ground after about a minute of the game, and exactly the same as the um, as the second goal. Just um, I don't, you know, I don't know if you recall, but it was just on the other side. Diagonal ball, Smith wins a header, um, nods it back across, and there was no one there. To be fair, yeah, but the warning signs were there early on, and that was obviously how they'd set up to play. Well, it was obvi obvious before the game, wasn't it? But yeah. Yeah, we struggled with it, didn't we? Can we can we all just agree that it wasn't Swaz on the first goal? It was it was he, well he, he, he I don't say he sliced it, but he hit it with some uh, with with some spin off the outside of his left. Foot. It certainly left it moved, foot. didn't it? It curled. Yeah, it curled. It didn't. Yeah, it didn't move in the air. It curled, didn't it? So yeah, because I think so, somebody mentioned Swaz, and I'm like, no, you can I have Swaz yeah, no. in this business? <laughs> So yeah, so you went Salford then, did you? Nice. Um, what what was the feeling? In, what was the feeling amongst the fans then at the Salford match? Disappointment or we got a draw? Great. Let's move on to Crawley. There was there was probably quite a few sort of emotions, you know, through the through the <laughs> evening. But um, it's a lot of frustration and uh, in the first half, obviously, and um, sort of a lot of relief, I suppose, towards the end. I mean, it's would you have took a point? Before the game, maybe not, but you certainly would at half time, wouldn't you? And, yeah. Um, it's just, it's, it was a, ch it's a challenging evening. Uh, you know, you know what you're going to be up against. Um, but they, they went about it much better in the second half. I think yeah. The, the substitutions changed the game, didn't they? And, yeah. Uh, 
the, the, Richards came on and injected a bit of pace and was a bit more a bit more direct in the sense of um, you know running at running at the Salford defenders and created a lot more space I think for everyone else. Yeah, I was impressed with Richards. I said it on the club yeah. courtyard club call for the Salford match that he came. He seemed to um, he seemed to handle. I won't say the occasion, but certainly the the the, the physicality of the game. So he he was coming out of maybe 50-50s or 60-40s with the ball and then releasing someone for a, um, for a, for a counter-attack, that kind of thing. So I, th- I was really impressed with him and I thought he deserved his start against Crawley as well. Yeah. Yeah, and I think um, Kane as well, he looked, he looked good and composed and he just seen, he, he, he was able to take the sting out of the game when he needed to and just keep hold of the ball and just look for a pass and stuff like that. Then he looked and his, his crossing and his corners were pretty decent. It's an area we've been lacking as well, isn't it? I think. Mm. Um, Cass very much looks like a, a centre-half playing right-back rather than, you know, a, yeah. a right-back playing a, a, as a as a right of a three. And um, we've really missed, haven't we, uh, South, um, South Wales? Yeah. It's, um, yeah. It, it, stand, it stands out so much um, how much we're missing him. Hopefully, um, Kane can can slot in though quite quite nice. Like I said, he's and his set piece delivery looks uh, look decent as well. Yeah, uh, he took yeah. a corner in the second half at Salford, and I thought he's he's hit that. I'm getting this, and I was like ten rows back, and then it's uh, <laughs> and he's dropped right under the goalkeeper. It's a great corner. Um, so hopefully that's um, that's something that we can exploit a bit more. Mm. Um, well, well, we did, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, and, and he, he'll only get better as he gets match fit. I mean, he's play, been playing for Manchester 22 in Gibraltar, I think it is. Yeah, but I think he, he left there in January, didn't he? So I don't oh, think he's did played he? Right. Oh, so he's not, yeah. right. So once he well, gets up to speed... Been, he's been training with us, haven't he? they? When they announced it, they said him he's been training with us for a few weeks, so he shouldn't be far off. I mean, yeah, as I say, he'll be fit, but as you say, it's just that next, the next bit. Um, yeah. The next bit what of being did, match fit yeah. rather than just fit. What did you both think of Wooden's performance in um, the Salford game? So I saw that he was he was copying a bit of flack on Twitter, um, but he was he, you know it was a, it was a real challenging game. I thought I think he I thought he did all right. Obviously, he was in, involved in both goals. Yeah, I just think for the for the last few weeks, I've thought Wooden his his first touch has not been he's not been good for holding it up. But I think we seem to be, and again, we sort of talk about the Crawley game. They were playing it more to his feet against Crawley, and it was he was said to be sticking, whereas it seemed to be a bit further up his body when the body ball was coming to him. But I think the way that referee was, it, it's just the way you know they seemed to. It, it was just he wasn't going to give free kicks away, was he? He was getting pretty much, um, he was getting manhandled most of the time, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, yeah. gives as good like, as he like gets. Said, though, right, Oh yeah, he definitely get, yeah. gives as good as he gets. He just doesn't get any free kicks, does he? Oh well, look, I think the referee did the obligatory one free kick either per half or per game, and I think he did the same for Matt Smith. To be fair, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like you said, though, Waggy, when it, as soon as he went into his feet, you know, we we create the first goal, don't we? It goes off mm. back off some madness. It's, it's like textbook stuff, isn't it? Mm. Get it into the striker's feet, and you know, get get people around him, and it work, works really well in that uh, in that uh, phase of play. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, got some comments coming in. Let's see what you think about these. Just going, sticking with the Salford match. Uh, a couple of people, but Phil Lloyd says, someone sat behind him, said Hinchliff should have saved it. <laughs> I mean, come on. No, because You're... you just say the way it started, it goes to his right and you see Hinchliff move to, yeah, move to his right to, and then it just goes completely the other way and he just goes, oh, I'm not getting that. There's no way, yeah. and it did. You know, it was even if he'd have dived, I don't think he'd have got anywhere near it. I think it always looks worse when the goalkeeper doesn't um, doesn't, doesn't move. move. It. Yeah, he just, you know, like like you said, it's probably not. You know, it's probably getting nowhere near it, and it's you know, it's a um, a, a one in a season. Yeah, you know, not even that. Yeah, you know, one in a five season strike, and but he does look bad when the, when the goalkeeper don't go for it, doesn't it? Yeah. So you you said you were a goalkeeper, Tom? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, so I was, I was, a, I was a goalkeeping coach. So for me, I'm thinking it's quite far out. So you set, aren't you? You, you? But you're probably not expecting the shot. And I don't know. I don't. I'm not looked at it back. But was there somebody in front of him, maybe blocking the trigger? I, I wasn't directly behind it, but there was a lot of bodies, weren't there? 
Um, there, there was a lot of bodies there, and and it's it's um, it's done quite a few things except the Swaz. So yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so you know, I don't. I think it's. I'd be more inclined if it was um, if it was Chaloner to be wondering why he's got that much space and time. Yeah, twenty five yeah. yards out rather than rather than criticising Inchley, but. I suppose he won't carry much weight. That as I've said, that he's one of my favourite players. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I like it. I like it. Um, others coming through. Uh, great news that Noel been given the all clear to play. So just answering that right back thing, Noel. I think what was it, two to three weeks away? Maybe. Did he actually say? Did he say how long it'd be? He just said he was given the all clear, so he's not. I, yeah, I don't know if I've have I read that somewhere, or is that have I read it on Twitter because somebody said it? That's probably what. That's probably more. Yeah, the truth. yeah, I don't think he said. I don't think he said it in the interview. Um, that when he'd be back, I think he did say he'd been given the all clear. So as you say, you don't know how much training he's been able to do because obviously I know that head injury is just obviously he's not been able to do any heading at all. So just wondering if he has kept up some sort of fitness. So again, as you say, it's just getting him up to that match level of fitness. Um, but it, yeah, hopefully that I mean that'll make a I think that'll make a massive difference. It sort of gives us a bit more of relief on that on the right hand side. And Kane can also play left back, I believe. He can. So maybe can. it can maybe we can rest somebody. And take a bit, of, take a bit of slack from him, or take a bit of slack off him. Yeah. So this is, I mean, County eighteen eighty three said that earlier on. So the Matt Stick Torre gets his terrible lad knees, the fans he's, behind him, not on his back, knocking his confidence. I think he played. He's played. He played well um, at Salford, and obviously he got his goal. And I think he did play well against Crawley, apart from that one mistake. But it was a bad clearance. I think we still had the opportunities to be able to get rid of that. I think Pai missed the tackle and Horsfall didn't go with his man. So it was just it again, it was one of them it's a catalogue of errors, isn't it, for the for the for the Crawley goal. Um but it's because it's Torre that if yeah, fair enough, if he'd have cleared it, then there wouldn't have been any issues. But it's not just it's not just his fault, but he was the one that got singled out. Yeah. What do you think of Torre, Tom? It's I, I was really glad to see him get a goal at Salford because he, he's clearly a lad who's just he really just needs some confidence and he's he's obviously a good player. He's he was in the League Two team of the year, wasn't he? And um, been around at this level for for a while and represents his national team. And um, he, he's so he's, he's he's clearly a good player. There, he's just really lacking in confidence. And I was. I was really hoping that you know after that goal, uh, I said to to, um, to my godfather who went to the game with was like, I really hope it kicks on now, and mm -hmm. that that does yeah. in the world of good. But um, I mean, uh, he spent a, fair, a decent amount of time playing at the left side of the three, hasn't he as well? Um, which isn't you know isn't a position that he played in uh, that I know of prior to um, to the season. So it's, that's a bit of a challenge there for him, isn't it? But. It's, um, he just needs that bit of confidence, doesn't he? And I was hoping that he'd be able to to kick on a bit after Salford, but hopefully he don't, he's not copping too much flack for um, you know for, for Monday night because, like like you said, like he's just it's, it's a catalogue of errors, like you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, moving on to Crawley, I mean, it can't be. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it down to him if I was in net, if I was in his defence. I wouldn't put it down to him. He's he's made okay half a clearance. Let's let's face it. Yeah, but he's been there and he's cleared it. I think a few minutes before, he was the one stopping a cross, wasn't he? That that their lad potentially would have got ahead of you know would have had a free, a free a free in at the goal. So lots of lots has happened after that to get for them to score the goal, hasn't it? Between you know from from yeah. him clearing it. So it's it's unfortunate, yeah. Um, don't like to dig players out. Absolutely, don't like to dig players out. Uh, he does get a lot. Of, he does get a lot of shit on, on social media, though. Yeah, uh, which, which, I mean, it's, it, it started because of the beginning of the season. One, he was trying to be played. He's being played as a left centre back, and Chandler has come out and held his hands up and said, "You know, it, it was, it's it's my fault. It's not Torre's fault. I thought he could do a job there, and he wasn't comfortable. And you know, as you say, teams seem to." see that and uh, pick up on it and pinpoint 
pinpoint going after him. So, as you say, that it's, it's obviously it's a knock on effect from that, isn't it? So, uh, fans have got with as fans we've got on his back a bit, and then you know he's not had a. We thought he was going to go away to the African nations. You know, hopefully clear his head, have a couple of games there, and then come back a different player. But I don't think he had a very good experience at the Af- at the Cup of Na- African Cup of Nations either, did he? Mm, no. Played in the first game, didn't play again, didn't he? And then wasn't there something around something with the aircraft, with the, one of the planes? That was before yeah. it all started, though, wasn't it? The before it was on the way, think so, right? Yeah, he's, he's definitely lacking confidence, isn't he? Because yeah, you no, know, he's yeah. obviously playing down that that left hand side. He's he's up and down the touchline, they were close to where I sit. And he's the he, he play, you know, he'll get to a point and then he will play it back to the centre half or he'll play it, um, you know, back to back to Hinchliffe. And I think uh, you know, I'm sure that's exactly. a confidence thing, isn't it? Like yeah. when you look at Pai, who's just come back into the team, and obviously clearly a real, really confident lad at the, at the, you know, at the moment. The way he plays through the lines is brilliant. Um, probably better than any other county defender, to be fair. Um, but you can see that that confidence there, and he's he's got that confidence to to be positive and mm-hmm. try and get a ball uh, ball into the striker or or to find a runner from midfield. But it's almost like you know if he's. Torrey thinks that oh, you know if I give the ball away, here, he's just going to get worse. <laughs> yeah. you know the, the main stand is going to be on me or whatever, so I'll uh, play it safe, sort of thing. Yeah, but I think the last two games, he's 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 looked more forward thinking, hasn't he? He's not he's not turned back as often. He's he's tried to get forward and tried to get them crosses and stuff. So as you say, maybe it is, but again, he plays he's better away from home because he's not getting as much as much stick. Yeah, maybe, maybe, possibly, possibly. Um, here's a question for you: If Rydell's fit from the start of the season, does Torre get as much of a look in as he has done? When I can't imagine. So, when was he signed? So, was he signed after Rydell was was sort of written off for the season? No, I don't. No, I think there were there were, there were starters at the start. Yeah. Were, they started at the start of the at the start of the start, didn't they? The start of the season. <laughs> yeah, one Rydell at left wing back and um, Torre as the left. Torre centre-back. was going to be the left centre back, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Which which would have been that that would have been bad, wouldn't it? I mean, because I don't think he that's not his most comfortable position. He he no. got into the league two team of the year playing left back, didn't he? Yeah. I saw um, I saw a video that the club released recently. I think it was uh, it might have might have been footage of because um, Madden Madden ticked over fifty goals um, a few weeks ago, and the amount of uh, the amount of assists coming off the left hand side. I think it, I think it was that video with the Madden goal uh, with all the Madden goals. But the amount of assists coming in off Rydell on the left hand side is I didn't quite yeah. appreciate that until I saw it all in you know cho- chopped into to, to a short video. Um, I think we've really missed him, and obviously Salva Mayo's on the other side. Must be um, must be an eye to defend against if you're setting a team up to play against County with Salva Mayo's and on one side and Rydell on the other. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then Rydell and Maka really, but if we stick to the left hand side, Rydell he often crosses it in full flight, doesn't he? And it's a and it's a really really good cross, and he's getting beyond the defender going forward, thinking positively. Whereas yeah. Torres, like we say, Torres more of a oh, no. I'll come back. I'll, I'll not. I wouldn't say take the easy option, but he never seems to look to go beyond the defender. It's always yeah. As you say, he's more. He's, he's, he's a, a, a defender. He's a, a proper defender, isn't he? Whereas you say Rydell is a is a wing back, more so that he wants to get forward and get them crosses in and like overlap and stuff. So yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Salford, then. I mean, good goal, good goal from uh, from Tanto. Uh, I don't, I don't understand why people don't rate Tanto personally. That's my personal opinion. Um, but I think he's, I think he's pretty, pretty, pretty good. Me. <laughs> I don't think he would have scored that last year. So he, t- t- yeah, because you think he'd have uh, thought about it too much? <laughs> Maybe. I think he's just come on so much, hasn't he? He's clearly you know, playing with confidence. Um, so, and he, he had an awful lot to do. I think it was only when I watched it back I realised how deep he actually fit that ball up. Yeah. Um, but you know the defender, the defender was all over him, wasn't he? And um, yeah. yeah, we showed a lot of strength and composure, yeah. and uh, it was a good, and, you know, a great finish. 
yeah, he held off. I think it was Tilt, wasn't it, at the time? The yeah, lad who yeah. scored the second goal for Salford. Um, yeah, really good goal. Okay, on to the Crawley match then, which is a bit fresher in our memories from Monday. What we're saying about that? I mean, we've we've covered the Torre clearance and the and the, and the equaliser. What what positives can we draw out of draw out of the uh, Monday Monday match? Okay, I think it's the second half, isn't it? <laughs> and, and, the positive is the second half. The, I mean, the, yeah. first, the first half we were just we were just too sloppy. Everybody just seemed to be it was simple simple passing that just seemed to undo us. Um, I don't think they were. I think they looked. They look. They look good at um, passing out and beating the press that we were doing in the first half. But then they just didn't seem to have the product. Once they got through that initial press, they get a ball into like sort of the centre circle area, and then they didn't seem to. They didn't seem to know what to do with that, and it seemed to. Or we'd get an interception, but then we'd give the ball away, or it'd be a bad pass. And so I think they're the first half. I think they look. They look decent at playing the ball out, you know, they were pinging it everywhere, weren't they? And then, you know, did finally find the ball out. Um, but apart from that, I don't think they were they were that threatening. Um, I know Maguire had that glaring, um, the glaring header that we just completely missed. And then there was obviously the, the two mistakes from Hinchliffe at the beginning, uh, kicking it against the, the player's back, which Camps, was yeah. fortunate, fortunate that it dropped back to him. And then the rush clearance that gave it to their lad on just on the halfway line, who fluffed his lines and put it out for a throw. <laughs> you know, if he'd have had yeah. a bit more composure with an open net, he could have either took a touch and hit it, or I think there was two or three players sort of more in the middle that he could have passed it to. Um, so yeah, I think that was we we were just yeah just too loose for the passing. I thought in the first half we just didn't look we didn't look on it. Do you think they were a little bit too direct as well? I was, I was because I was I was looking at it and you know I was, I was watching it. I watched it on the on the stream, but um, you know were, were they getting the ball into you know, Sarsovic and Camps's feet enough, um, or was it sort of bypassing bypassing those lads? And like you said before about going into going into Wotton at chest height, you know, is it uh, could we have um, played through the lines a little bit more, especially with with the, the team that um, that was starting with Camps in that as well. Um, I was yeah. I was it is um, I was surprised to see uh, uh, because Evans has been out of the team now, hasn't he, for for a couple of weeks? Yeah. I thought I, I thought that he might start unless he's had a knock that that have not uh, that have not known about. But I thought that he might start that game, especially because Bailey was quite quiet against Salford. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think we did, but I think there was obviously as a ploy because the, um, Alafi played on the left, didn't he? In the first, certainly the first 15, 20 minutes, he was oh, he was hugging the touchline, wasn't he? And you could see two or three times we put the ball out out to him there. So obviously, he must have seen something. Um, Challenger must have seen something as to to do that on purpose because he sort of put Richards out on the right hand side, didn't he? Um, and I think we said about uh, I can't remember which game it was, maybe the Newport game. Where they had uh, yeah the, and, the home this is the home game isn't it yes yeah yeah so crows that yeah he swapped crows he swapped crows Evans. down and uh, was it Evans maybe I uh, know not Evans um I can't remember but to to cut inside and cut, bring yeah. the ball in rather than go on the outside yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so he's seen that but then I think when we came out like the second half he switched Richards and Alafi over and I think both of them played so much better. In the second half than they did in the first half and i was just wondering if they'd have done that a bit a little bit earlier maybe it would have changed it for the first half it's yeah. difficult to difficult to see but it definitely made a difference um and yeah someone said about their subs as well if that contributes yeah. to i'm just gonna come to that so um yeah, Neil Warburton mentioned it. That's another elephant in the room. That's been doing a lot on socials, the subs, you know. And I, I was um, not 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 name dropping here, but I was on BBC Radio Manchester with James Jennings and John Kieran, and I was asked po post match about the subs, and I said, "Well, he's damned if he doesn't, damned if he doesn't, because you're winning one nil. Do you protect the lead, go five at the back, and invite the pressure, or do you 
either stay with what you've got or change like for like or even go attacking and leave potentially space in behind because they were getting on top of us anyway. So either way. Um, and, yeah, and, the, and the guy who was presenting said to me, he said to me, he said, it's funny you should say that because he asked the same thing to Pep Guardiola because he covers <laughs> City as well. And Pep Guardiola says, there are always good substitutions when they work and bad when they don't. <laughs> You know, it's like, yeah, yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, I thought it was I, I thought it was quite surprising to see as soon as we scored was Paddy come on for Richards. I thought Richards was having a good game. I, he didn't look he didn't look tired, but you can understand, I think it was always going to happen, Paddy coming on for Richards because, you know, as you say, 1-0 up or whatever, Paddy just gives you a bit more composure and stuff, doesn't he? And he can slow the game down. He's got a good touch. He's got he got a good pass and stuff like that. Um, and then they made a couple of substitutions, didn't they? And basically looked as if they went to a four three three. I think it was, and or they were almost like a a, a four a four two five, weren't they? So I think that's why he bought Burn on because they were starting to get some pressure. And then he said in his post match, didn't he, that five minutes after that. Kane turned around and goes, oh, I think I've tweaked something. I need to come off. So we've only got one more opportunity to make a change. So that's why he made he had to make the two changes to get to try and get Evans on um, and stop uh, maybe stop Alafi getting injured as well because he he was tired. Yeah. So yeah, he's as you say, yeah, every substitution is brilliant if it works, but it's just. What do you, what, what do you think, Tom? Would you have would you have stick or twist? What would you have done? Well, in my many years of football manager experience, um, <laughs> I probably would have. <laughs> I probably would have um, uh, gone for the twist, and I probably would have uh, would have tried to secure things up. Especially he's come out in his um, um, post match interview, hasn't he? And, and and said that there was a few lads that, that needed to come off for, for fitness wise, and they played on Thursday, and um, there's a few tired legs, so. He's like, like I said, he's probably pre, pre thought out, especially the the Madden one. Um, so you, you can you can see the logic behind it. And it's such a such a fickle game, isn't it? Can't it? Can we go on and, and win? It's it's a great decision. And he was it's just it's frustrating, isn't it? That you yeah, you almost feel like felt like can we did all the hard work? Um, you know, they did all the hard work, and I think one of the one of the main main things I came away with was a bit of frustration, really. Because it's you know, it's, and they didn't really look like creating much did they? So we've we've gifted yeah. them, gifted them a point really. And I was, I was trying to trying to be dad about it afterwards, and he said a point away is never a bad result. Mm, but he felt true. like it, right? Yeah, it did. Yeah. Um, I think the difference was as well. I think when we went to two two against Salford, I think we sort of we we sort of took the foot off the pedal, didn't we? As if we was like, all right, well, we we're, we're back to two two. We're we're all right now. We're happy. Whereas against Crawley, you could see there was still the impetus was there to try and get a second. Um, even though we'd got the first, you could see that we still pushed on, which I thought looked looked different and better than what we did against Salford. And yeah. it was just like, just unlucky that we didn't go we didn't go two 0 up. If we'd have gone two 0 up, then it's done and dusted. But as they say, the cliche. He's dangerous yeah. at one nil. Oh, he's dangerous at one nil. Always oh, dangerous at one nil. It was, it was good to see County making the most of set pieces as well, and you know I think that's an area that's been been lacking a bit, hasn't it? And, um, it's, I, think, I was I was trying to work, I was trying to work out when the last time we scored from the corner was. Obviously, Cam scored that volley with his first touch in it um, a month or so ago, but before that, I couldn't remember. Oh, uh, now you're asking, yeah. I, I assume it was Ash Palmer, but. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's funny because we don't sc- for, 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 for all the Fraser Horse falls going nine for Northampton all corners or whatever. We we just don't seem to score from corners and don't have that aerial threat, do we? It's weird, I can't remember it? the last time that Horse fall headed a ball from a corner. <laughs> but I'm glad you added that end bit. <laughs> <laughs> Right. No, you say yeah. We seem to try and put it to the back post. He hangs around the back post, but we just don't seem to get the ball to horseful. I don't think you say yeah for the corners. For the corners. Yeah, for the corners. Um, what I'll do, I've just, I've just made a decision. What I'll do, I'll I'll, I'll upload the opposition review with uh, Jamie Harris from MK Dons after after this because we're on forty minutes already. We've still got to do the running. 
and getting reses. So I think that's going to take at least 20 minutes. So it's a 13 minute video. So I'll upload that separately. Something separate you can watch in your own time. I won't, uh, won't put it in here. Um, yeah, horse falls a weird one, isn't it? But I think, so, yeah, someone, I've just about to say this. Someone, someone must do this. Um, <laughs> what's, a hot, what's a time? Do you really do that? Count you, you know, you free. Do you really put a tenner on him every week? I'd have stopped after the, about three weeks, me, if he'd not scored. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what, what's the really just, definition of insanity? You've got, look, you've got to look at what the odds are, haven't you, for him to get? Is it just, is it any time scorer or is it first goal scorer? I suppose that's. The odds would be different for that, wouldn't he? If it's an anytime goal scorer and you're still getting twenty-eight to one or something like that, then it's you've got twenty-eight weeks for him to score to come to go out even, haven't you? <laughs> there speaks the man who bets a lot. Impulsive <laughs> <laughs> gambler in the house. <laughs> I've got it under control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Shall we have a look at some of the running stuff? Uh, I know that Clive from um, some Mansfield Town podcast that I can't remember, Clive. I do apologise, but I don't. I can't remember the name of it. Um, I can't remember. But Clive's watching. Uh, nobody else is, I don't think, apart from that Forest fan. Um, but he's got nothing to do with it, has he? So let's have a look at this um, this running data for the audio oh, listeners yeah, listening gosh. back. We will try to. We'll try to. Um, explain this as much as we can if i can share my screen um just give me a second this is where the technology fails me clearly there we go so there we go let me get rid of the uh the old overlay can everybody see that that's really hard to see isn't it let me try and improve yeah. that a second uh, this is like being at work. This being online. Can you see that? Can you see that? Um, there we go. There we go. Okay. Make your screen bigger, guys. Everybody, make your screen bigger. Right. So, what basically what what this is? It's predicted final table. Uh, only the playoffs, apart from one of the one of the tables, but. Based on points per game from the last four, points per game from the last eight, points per game from the last 10, points per game from the last 12, there's the current standings, and then there's predicted based on points per game, all games. Now, friend of the show, Mark Brockbank, created this for us, and we've got another one to go through that was created by Waggy. You'll be pleased to know. So, <laughs> everyone's turned off now, aren't they? Border <laughs> shit at this. <laughs> but, Part of which time in our hands. <laughs> yeah. I mean, points per game is. I mean, obviously, it's very, very rudimentary, isn't it? Because Mansfield, points per game, might just go on a losing streak. They might go on a winning streak. This is football we're talking about, isn't it? So let's just take it all with a pinch of salt, but it's quite fun to look at. It and is, you look but at you can it, see the difference there, can't you? And just going on points per game, last four, Mansfield are at 1.5. The last eight, they're at 1.88. The last 10, they're at 2. Point, is that 2. Point? 2.1 so, 2.10 yeah 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 so that's what i mean it's like there you go you look at the last 10 games it's like yeah mansfield are gonna uh, gonna walk it but then you look at the last four games it's like oh well they've only got 1.5 so as you say yes very much a pinch of salt but it's... absolutely yeah 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 so mark gave me a summary of this and and it, it made me shudder <laughs> he basically yeah. said he basically said, no matter what happens, it looks like, based on all those PPGs and PPG or games, it looks like we have to go to Wrexham and get something. Yep. yep. Tom, how are you feeling about that? Oh, it's, it's very, um, you went very Kevin Keegan there, Russ. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I've, I've, um, I've had some bad experiences at Wrexham. Um, I, I missed my own housewarming to go to Wrexham away, and obviously we got beat. Uh, Which FA one? Wire. Um, FA the trophy. FA FA trophy. Oh, my wife was absolutely fuming as well. Um, she'd planned this big do, and and I went to Wrexham and I came back, and we got beat. So it wasn't even worth it, really. But yeah, so I've not. Had, I'm not did very good. Come, did you just come home and kick everybody out? <laughs> oh, I, I was. I just. I, I walked in and just said, "Look, just give me ten minutes again. <laughs> just, 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 give me, just, just give me. Give me ten minutes on my own." <laughs> and um uh, but yeah it's um it, it's it's interesting this because if 
I think the you looking at counties fixtures, we've got the bottom three, haven't we? As well. But then yeah. you look at that and think they're gonna be scrappy. Yeah. I've I've had a look at all the fixtures and out of the last nine, there's only there's only knots County and Accrington that aren't gonna have anything to play for. Yeah. Which is then you know, they're not even you know, the, you don't really play in the teams at the top or the bottom do at this point. Um so it's these um how many how many points do we reckon do we reckon we're gonna need? It's talk of fourteen and the or six fourteen or sixteen. Yeah, yeah. Um but to be fair, if we get sixteen that's eighty four points. That wins it three years out of the last four. Which is yeah. frustrating. But still um it's if if you look at those if you win those two games uh Notts County away and Accrington at home, the the two games that were playing mid table teams, they're the third to last and second to last. So hopefully they'll all be on holiday at that point. That mean that gives us ten points from one, two, three, four, five, seven games. Right? So you'd back count to get ten points from seven games, wouldn't you? So we'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Um, I think Saturday's obviously massive for it. No. Yeah, I can't yeah, decide whether I think it's, Sat- it's, Saturday's the big, th- what, the big one, isn't it? Uh, it's, is, it's, is it must win or must not lose? I think it's must not lose. Good question. I oh, think I think, it, I think it's must not lose. If we, I mean, if we win, it's a, a brilliant because that again gives us that cushion, doesn't it? We've got it's three games in hand, haven't we? On I think on MK Dons, but if we lose, they go above us. And I think we potentially drop to fourth. I think, don't we? If we don't, mm-hmm. if we don't get a draw, or if we don't win on Saturday, so it's yeah. I think it is. It is a big. It's a big one. I don't think it's. It's not a must win, but I think it's a mustn't lose. Judging by the other teams that we've got to play, um, I think yes. But oh, right, that's great. Mustn't lose. Say say we draw it on Saturday. I think. I think. The internet will oh, stop all the will be out. They'll be calling yeah. for the then. Yeah. Sorry. And so, if we if we if we don't lose on Saturday, go on, Russ. You was before I rudely interrupted you. No, no, I, no. I was going to say the internet will stop if if we if we <laughs> if we if we draw on Saturday if we don't beat MK Dons. And let's face it, MK Dons since Williamson was appointed, they've won the most points in League Two since his appointment. They are one of the form teams. They are really good. They were good when we played them at Stadium MK. They were really, really good. And Alex Gilby in the middle there, I'd love him to be at County. He's, he's a class player. They're not. They're going to come. I won't give anything away from the the little preview that I did with the Oppo preview that I did with um with with Jamie. But they play like us. So they if we you know they're, they're not long ball. They're not um. I won't say physical. They probably are physical, but we we play into their hands. I think is the is the, is the, is the bottom line there. But do you not think that we play better against teams like that? Yes, yes. It'll be a cracking match on Saturday. But I yeah, think we've got I mean. to win it. <laughs> Team, teams that come, teams that come at us, or yeah. want to play, want to play same as us. I and I know we're, we're not in a, a rich vein of form. We're we're off form and stuff like that. But if a team comes to play against us that plays like us, I think generally we're a better team than them. We yeah. tend to be better than them. Um, and I think I think defensively, we we've, we've been a lot better t- since Crew and Tramir, haven't we? We've 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 apart from the first half of Salford. <laughs> Yeah, in the last bit of Crawley. <laughs> well, it, but I think we've we, we've been we've been better we've been better at the back, um, and I think Kane coming in, I think that's made it a better on that side. You know, see what we can do if we are going to stick with a back four or if we go with a back five. We've um, looked better since Pi come back, haven't we? As well, yeah. Gives that balance, obviously, being left footed as well, which is which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. Who um who, if anybody, are we expecting back from the physio room from the physio table this weekend? Crowsdale and Powell, I think he said. So, so no I don't know if they'll I think yeah. he said they'll be in they'll be in contention. So um 
hopefully, yeah. He makes a big yeah. difference, Crowdell, doesn't he? Um, he goes, he goes so under the radar. Um, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think he, he, he's he's sort of in the, the sort of talk around the sort of man of the match um, in in the little section where I say is just talk who's played better than Crowdell. <laughs> he's Crowdell. So Crowdell's man of the match is someone if someone hasn't played better than him, and it's he, he's just you know, so solid and um, he was odd to see him because he had a couple of games where he wasn't great. Wasn't yeah. He? And he was yeah. odd. He, he stuck. He stuck out because of uh, you know how consistent he usually is, and the the injuries obviously obviously killed us, haven't we? And I had a, I had a quick look through the um, through the amount of games that players have missed. And I went through the first, you know, rough roughly around a, a lads that would be in and around the start of eleven. They've missed a total of one hundred and fifty seven games, and you know combined, it's, it's Bizarre, isn't it? That's ridiculous. Yeah. It's ruined, yeah. isn't it? I don't. I know. I know. There's a there's an injury table, isn't there, for the Premier League? I wonder if there's one for League Two. You know how many days? How many days? Pl- uh, I, don't, I don't think you'd fit it on an A1 piece of paper. Because <laughs> 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 we we've sort of said it. We we talk with a lot of a lot of away you know away supporters, um, and yeah. it seems that every per, every team has had an injury crisis. At some point, at least at one point in this season, yeah. But and ours then, has been constant, hasn't it? Yeah, we've, been, had, yeah. We, we've had we've had we've had points where we've not had an injury crisis, <laughs> yeah. haven't we? You know, there's, there's yeah, not been. But it's just, but you seem to even you look at like Premier League teams and stuff like that. They've had a lot of injuries, and there just yeah. seems to be, for whatever reason, this season there's been a hell of a lot of teams with a lot of injuries. It's just a, it's just a weird one. Yeah, you'd like, just, to, you'd like to hope it's bad luck, wouldn't you? Because of you know, County have obviously got a massive backroom team, and yeah, um, you know, a lot of physios and performance analysts and this sort of thing. So you'd, you'd like to think that it's just fluke and just one of those things. But yeah, certainly in the, the beginning of the season, there wasn't many sort of, as we said, as, as they call it, impact injuries. Was so there wasn't many injuries that were happening, or when it was, it, it was like. South Wales, one of his was he just went over on his went over and on his on his ankle, didn't he? And that was it. And he got stood on at one point. Uh, you know, it was just yeah, it's just been ridiculous the amount of injuries that we've had. And if we hadn't had them, I, we'd have you know I think we'd have had we'd have had it near enough wrapped up by now. And I know hindsight's a, a, a marvelous thing and all that jazz, but just you look at the the strength, the squad strength that we've got. If we'd have had everybody fit. I don't think anybody would have touched us the first 11 or second 11. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, if, if we'd have had anybody fit, it'd be a completely different story. Right, take us through this one then, Waggy, because this is yours. And I think I think I know what you're getting at here, but go on, briefly well, take us through what we're doing here. The last, the last time, so we look in September, we played Crawley at home and we drew 3-3. And yep. up to that point, people were calling for Challenger's head, saying that we were shit, we were out of our depth. We're going to be fighting relegation. Um, so we look at the the seven games before that, and I admit there is two cup games in there, one against Man U under-21s and Chef Wednesday. Um, but we won one, drew three, lost three. Drew against Crawley, and then we went on a 12-game and we beat and run after we drew with Crawley. So you look at our results this time for the seven games before Crawley, and we won one more and lost one less. So, in in effect, we are better this time drawing against Crawley than we were last time. And then you look at the nine, nine games we've got left. You look at the results that we've had with them and the big, well, in the season so far. That's really interesting. Yeah. And then you look at of those nine games, five of them were were teams that we played in that 12 game unbeaten run excellent Tom so, does that fill you with more confidence that the next nine games we we, we won in eight of them we won the reverse fixture sure it's, sure it's going to be no problem then <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, I, 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 I often wonder if, if we weren't county fans and we were fans of a different club who you know are, are we are we just is our stock sort of mindset like, oh, we're going to cut this up? 
or you know so it's, I, I think, think it you know, seems when to you... be that way doesn't it yeah I think it's it's as you say you hear everybody saying it, it's it's never going to be easy because that's not the county way that's you you hear you hear that you hear that all the time don't you we're not going to make it easy because that's not the county way no if there's no jeopardy, uh, yeah. Yeah. If there's no jeopardy it's not county so unless it goes to the last game of the season then it's not you know we can't we can't have it all wrapped up it'll, it'll so, make yeah, for a more interesting end of the season by doing it it's, it'll be good redemption for my ruined housewarming party <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so it's always a personal angle, isn't there? I love it. I love it. Yeah. Uh Clive Parkins just uh just, just yeah. mentioned he's, he said, You've got it won. Well, yeah, I mean few. Yeah, we I think we have. I think we have with this with these stats, uh, Clive. Definitely. I'm always I'm always a half a glass half full. So I got to yeah. look at got, got to look at the positives. Well, that's and... it. I think we've shown we've shown two we've shown two elements here, haven't we? The first one was points per game, which all says we're gonna finish second based on points per game and we've got to get something from Wrexham away so that's a, I say that's a negative view this one when you look at these statistics and, and this data there's nothing to say that we are there's nothing to say that we are not capable of winning those football matches because in nine eight out of nine of them we've already beat that team once before this season so that's a positive isn't it yeah and just yeah, it's, it's, it's going to play a big part isn't it just you know they're, they're yeah. clearly good they're clearly it was a second, you know, second in the league for a reason, aren't we? You know, we've been on a, a huge unbeaten run for a reason. It's just just a bit of a confidence and belief. And obviously injuries haven't helped, but like, the squad's unbelievable, isn't it, really? So yeah. It is, um, I think it's it's not been able to field the same eleven as well. I think yeah. We changed he's changed formation quite a few times, but we're not playing the same players in the same position for every game. I think if we'd have had if we'd have had a consistent eleven. I think that would have made a difference as well for the last, you know, the last couple of months. Um, but we've just, again, we've not been able to do that because, as you say, it seems to be we get we would get one back and we get one out, or we get one back, two out. It, that's just seems to have been, and none of them need, seem to be niggles, do they? They don't seem to be out for just a week or a, a, two weeks. Yeah, everyone seems to be out for five, six weeks, don't they? Minimum. Yeah. There'll, yeah. there'll be lots of twists and turns yet as well, obviously. We're, oh, absolutely. So we're, yeah. we're sort of assuming now with the Manfield just going to win every game. And, um, well, and that's the same. Yeah, the thing, but... yeah, I don't think anybody wants to win it. I think everyone's when, trying the best to fuck it up. <laughs> when, when you <laughs> when, when you look at the fixtures as well, you know, all the teams around us have got tough games. They're all playing teams yeah. down, the, you know, in and around the top in the playoffs. I think that just says a lot about the way the shape of the league is. You know, these, are, these teams yeah. down at what 10th and 11th have. That are well in the playoff spot. Yeah, um, and they play so well as well, so, don't they? Don't yeah, they? yeah. You know. Yeah, it's so it's so tight. There'll be loads of twists and turns. Yeah, and yeah. I think everyone will be. Uh, there'll be an awful lot of sat at Edgley Park, sort of keeping an eye on Flash Goal, won't they? Seeing what's going on elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. As you say, though, you can't even you can't even ignore that, can you? Because I've turned the track. Don't look at my phone. Keep my phone away, and then I will look at half time. But then you look around, and somebody in front of you's got flash score up, and you're like, "Oh, Rex are winning!" Or, "Ah, oh, shit!" <laughs> so you can't. You just can't get away with it. Where, where's the? Where's it gone with the guy with the little radio next to the bed? <laughs> I'm just. I'm just about old enough to remember that. To be fair, they're always I want that guy. the back. <laughs> Good stuff. Right, should we get on to getting reses because we're on an hour now and we've not had the Oppo preview, which will be a separate thing. So, um, yeah, time flies when time you're having fun. Having right, fun. yeah, <laughs> another cliche. If you don't like them, so it. Right, let's go getting reses. Reses. Get in the reses. Get in the reses. Get in the reses. Not having that. Get in the reses. Oh, get in reses. So, Tom, you said you had one. So, oh, you said you had yeah, two actually. But I've got, I've got a couple. I don't know if I can have two. Yeah. Oh, go well, on, yeah, go yeah. on. Yeah, go on. Because if you have two, because when you, if you, well, when you, when you come back on, I hope you will come back on. You can, you'll have more then. Anyway, so because that's what yeah, football you, does to you. Well, the, the the first one's quite quite a personal one that probably isn't um, isn't something that a lot of people have, but the, oh, right. he's, he's aimed at he's aimed at the fellow who sits behind me. To be fair, <laughs> and he, he just shouts, send it the whole game. 
Um, and I've tried to move away from him. I've tried to like shuffle down the row a bit and he seems to just follow me, this guy. And um, yeah, just, you know, I, I spend most of my Saturday morning thinking, oh, I hope he's not there today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, should be, you should not be feeling that about the football. <laughs> <laughs> but, he's, um, but yeah, even like, you know, we've got some, We've got some great players, and we playing, you know, Sarsovic and and Camps and stuff. We're playing lovely football, but this fellow would rather see it just smashed way over them. So there's a yeah, there's send it. <laughs> <laughs> he, I think he's, he's, he'd like that that John Smith style of football, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's so the the send it can can get in the reses, and and also one that that's that's, that's a bit sort of odd, I think, and, and only annoys me is when defenders clap the linesman for giving offside. I don't know if we've ever had that one before, but I don't, I don't, no, I don't know I don't why it winds me up particularly. Yeah. I know it's quite niche, um, but it's, I'm trying not to sound like Roy Keane, but it is the, the job, isn't it? You know, um, you know, it's, it's literally the job. So you know, they're just, just the little sort of, like one of them, it's not even a real clap. It's, yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Does that go in the reses though? It probably does, you know. Well, we can all vote on it anyway. We can, you know, is it, not, is it like just do they? Is it just them doing it, or is it them sort of? Is it a sarcastic clap that they've got one right? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I, I think I don't. I really don't know. I just think it's, it, I don't know. I don't. I don't even know why it really gets on my nerves. To be honest, it just does. <laughs> it's totally rational as to why it does get on my nerves. Because it even gets on my nerves when county defenders do it, and we've got an offside. Yeah. Did you ever do it as a keeper then? Did you are you did you ever clap a, a liner as a keeper? I bet I would have better did. I bet, I bet <laughs> <it's in there. laughs> so I mean I mean to be to be to be fair, it was it was a novelty for me to play at a standard to have linesman, but um yeah, there was usually a ref that was sort of twenty or thirty yards behind play, giving offside. Um but yeah, you know, I'd like to think. Obviously, I was a, I was a young man then, so I feel like my, my sort of principles would would kick in now if I ever did come out of retirement, which I've contemplated after digging out my old boots in the shed the, last week. So I looked at him and sort of thought, oh, I, could, I could still do a job for someone. Still do a job. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Broken leg, first game. <laughs> I might hang. I might hang on to. Uh, I might hang on a couple of years and get in a vets team somewhere. Yeah. Hang on, a, have you heard that? Hang on a couple of years and getting a vets team. Jesus oh. Christ! I'd have to take a couple of years off to get in a vets team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, both of those can get in the reses. Let's do it. Yep. Waggy, what's yours this week, mate? You got one? Yeah, Scott Lindsay. All right, the Crawley manager. He can get in the reses. Um, he just it, it's watching it. Watching the stream and stuff, he just seemed to be screaming. Um, I know again, um, Chandler said that him and Clint Hill seemed to be having a, a running arguing match. The way that he threw his hands up in the air and uh, went off his head when the uh, camps got the ball and thought it had gone out, and the linesman didn't give it, and he was effing and jeffing. Did, did he get a yellow card for that one, or was it a different? Can't remember if he got one for that. I can't remember, he did get a yellow card. I think he so yeah, so for that, and then um, I don't know if you noticed at the end he went on the pitch and confronted um, Pi. Pi, yeah, I heard about yeah, that. He yeah. went up and confronted Pi, and Madden got involved and took took Pi away because I think he was having a go about um, the free kick that possibly well the oh, their player went that. down when Pi put his arm yeah. put his arm out. And it sort of tickled his tickled his nipple or something, and he went down as if he'd been shot in the face. Um, <laughs> That's another <laughs> name for the podcast. <laughs> the so yeah, so he went there. So I mean, I understand coming on and confronting players and having to go at players and stuff like that as a manager, you shouldn't be doing that. So he should have he should have come out and you know, said it in his in his press conference afterwards or it, whatever. He should have just talked about it then. He shouldn't be going on the pitch and start confronting players and having a go. And especially say, you know, it's he's only a, well, he's only 20, 21 or whatever, isn't he? Pie. So it's just like completely unprofessional. So, yeah, so he can get in the resers. Yeah, it's very, it's very non-league, isn't it, to do that? Very unprofessional, yeah. very non-league and very Bitcoin-y, wag-me sort of in it. So, yeah. 
Yeah, fair yeah. dues. Fair dues. Uh, my, my getting reses is individuals that do this tragedy chanting at football matches and then just like ruin the whole football, their future football going experience. Because as soon as you do it and you get caught, you ain't going to a football match again because you are getting banned. So I, don't, I just don't, I don't know what goes through their head in the first place to do it. Whether it's, whether it's Russia blood, whether it's alcohol, whatever, but bloody hell. It's bad enough that you're doing it, but also you're going to get banned for life, aren't you? That you, you know, especially when you're isolated doing it. If you know what I mean, these yeah, these yeah. Times where these, you, you, if you're in the, you know, as you say, if you're in the Stretford end for just as an instance, and you start singing things like that, but the whole Stretford end starts singing it, or if you're at the, in the cop and you start doing the same then it's, as you say yeah it's still it's not right but you get no. away with it but if you're like there's nobody nobody within three rows or four or five seats around you and you're and still you're doing it like that yeah. then yeah yeah absolutely you're gonna get you're gonna get pinned i mean that that guy at um at gillingham yeah um, yeah 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 yeah, the same yeah came running, came running across and yeah. yeah well i just yeah it just doesn't I don't know what goes through. Don't know what goes through their heads, but you know, it's, and the, the sad thing is, they're not going to be able to go to the football again. That, no. That's not the saddest thing about it, but that is a, a, an outcome of it. It's, it's they're not going yeah. to be able to go to the football again and do what they love doing, and you know, for a moment of madness. And it's just like, why, why, man, Jesus, that's. Uh... Yeah, you say, yeah, everybody gets a bit. You know, you get head up and you get emotional and stuff watching the football, but that is where, yeah. You know that there's a line that, yeah. as yeah. a as a sensible human being, that you shouldn't be doing. Yeah, not that I mean, saying I'm a sensible human being by the chance. No, no. I mean we're, <laughs> we're middle aged men, aren't we? We're not sensible. We're still thinking <laughs> somewhere, aren't we? Um, but um, yeah, I mean I've shouted at ball boys before, you know, because they're not they're not passing it back quick enough, or you know that yeah. kind of thing. But. Um, yeah, that's, that's my getting the reses anyway. And someone did ask before, what is getting the reses? What is reses? Reses is, and I think JK's put it out there, the reses is uh, Sykes reses behind County. So getting reses. If we don't like something, get it in reses. There was a belting one in the comments when they about local residents. So I'm trying to block any planning permission at EP, which is a jazzer. Yes. Belting one. Yes. Um, it's funny that, I mean, I started to watch the video of the person that was doing the reasons why the area needs protecting. Uh, and I'm going to watch the full video. It's about 22 minutes long. I didn't get to watch it all. Um, so I'm going to form my own opinions on that. Oh, um, yeah. I nipped, I nipped down to the consultation yesterday, actually. It was, oh, um, right. I would add that. Yeah, it looked, yeah, it looked really good. Um, and he's, you know, he's, he's clearly been very well thought out and he's, planning stages and, and that sort of thing. And I think the, the there was a lot of local residents there uh, at the time and it all seemed quite positive really. Because it's it's gonna benefit it's gonna benefit, you know, Edgeley, Stockport as a whole. It's gonna be a lot of job creation. Obviously it's good for the football club. Should be good there's not there's not really many downsides. There's a bit more traffic every other Saturday. But all the benefits that, that brings is you know, totally outweighs uh, you know having to get stuck in traffic for ten or fifteen minutes. Yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're, I mean, I've heard something else as well. I mean, someone's just corrected me. It's the nature reserve behind the pop side because there's a sort of area, and it goes into great detail about the areas as well. Um, but overall, it's you're right. It's going to be a good thing, and traffic management isn't is, a, is an issue as well that needs to be looked at. Somebody who lives on Edgeley and has been doing the rounds on Facebook complaining about traffic management, um, and turns out this person's a city fan, um, sure. as, he, as he as he let it slip. So. Mm. Is it is it traffic management, mate? Is it? Is that what you're worried about? Just he's still intrigued by John Ardica, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. Right, before we let you go, I've got one question for you, Tom. You've got to tell us about the Xmas card. Oh yeah. Well, we um, I was on a works conference. Uh, and it happened to be very close to Ebbsfleet when the county were playing Ebbsfleet away. And there was about six or seven of us at this conference. And me and about four of us stuck off and went to watch county away at Ebbsfleet. <laughs> and he was, he was 
classic county that time. County win one 0 over Ash Palmer Edda. Uh and we all you know, we had a couple of pints and we all put big on Ash Palmer to but Ash Palmer first goal county to win. And he came in and basically everyone from the whole office won, you know, at least between fifteen hundred quid each. Um so we were sending out the corporate Christmas card. Um and I said, Oh, we've got to send Ash Palmer one, haven't we? So we sent him like a branded um Christmas card and sent it into the club. Um basically from everyone in the business who've Basically got their uh, got the drinks paid for all evening courtesy of Ash. So nice. Um, so yeah, I don't know whether it ever got to him. Um, I just I just sent it to the club. So hopefully it did. But you know, you never know. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd like to think he did, wouldn't you? You'd like to think um, he did. I've just I've just admitted on YouTube Live that I snuck off for five hours <laughs> at work event. Actually, um, yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm sure thing. you've made that time up. I'm sure you've made that time up. Probably, maybe, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Just not. I've well, given you a lifeline there. I know. Yeah, I've spent. I've spent all. I've spent all week going through uh, going through stats. I've done nothing this week yet. Um, so yeah, I owe a bit of time back. To be fair. Nice, good story. I like that one. I like it. Cool. Right. I think we're out of time. We're way past by my bedtime. Anyway. So what we'll have to do, Tom, we'll have to get you back on. Talk about your football career and, and all that that's, ge work. that's generous for us to be fair, but... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you know i'm more, obviously more than happy to come on and listen listen every week as part of me sort of build up to the game on, on a friday or a saturday so you know it's nice a one. pleasure to be on so thanks thanks for having me no worries no worries you're definitely thanks. welcome back on um okay so cheers for everybody for listening just a few things about upcoming podcasts obviously we've got the county uh, the Courtyard Club call, sorry, that is back on Monday following the MK Dons match. I've got a mental podcast that's been recorded with Andy Nevitt. That's going to come out very soon as well. Plus, you will hear the, or you'll see the MK Dons Oppo preview as well. I've got that ready to go. Uh, that'll be uploaded probably tomorrow morning now because I'm a bit tired. So I'm going to get it all done in the morning. Don't shake your head at me, Waggy. Do not shake your head at me. Got to get up early in the morning, mate, for work. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that thing. <laughs> that, that thing, yeah. That thing. Uh, thanks to everybody that subscribes to us on Patreon. Your subscription is really, really appreciated. Uh, we've got over 60 uh, patrons now, so that's fantastic. Cheers for that. If you want to become a patron, just go over to our website. You get all of our content ad-free, and you get it earlier than when they come out for everybody else. So it's uh, a bit of a, a, bit of a, uh, a positive there. And you get discount on all of our Etsy store goods as well plus you will get uh what's the word priority for any events that we do so i'm going to be speaking to uh benji and basque on friday about some putting something on at basque maybe over the uh the close season and obviously the jim gannon event for the co-op you will get um get, get discount and priority on that as well for being a patron so it it is worth it amongst all the other things right waggy tom cheers Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers thank, thank you. you. Tom, stay on. We'll be after and we'll uh, we'll have a quick chat. See you later, everybody. Yeah. Bye now. No worries. This episode of the Scarf Begala War was written, recorded and produced by Russ Johnson and Nick Lee. The music on the opening titles was produced by Dan Johnson. Subscribe wherever you get your content, as well as finding out how to join the TSBW fan club. Check out the links in the description or go to all the W's, scarfbegalawar.co.uk.